I know nurses, uh, I know school teachers where they, they're the single income earner for their family and they can afford to live in a place like Prince Rupert. And, and I know it's crazy here, so. Well, you know, Paul, I see just in your eyes how yeah. stunned you are just having to say that. Yeah. Um, and who's coming to mind for you as you speak about this? What, what are your feelings about that? You know, so I, our office sees about, there's two, two advocates, and we see about 1,200 1, to 1,300 people a year coming in. And I would say 60% of them are over 55. Mm. And what's interesting, the people come in my office are people that haven't been on income assistance right. before. Mm -hmm. They're seniors, uh, you know, they may be around 60, their, their job has been phased out or <laughs> it's been reduced and they're trying to get in the market. And it's just tricky, but it's, it's, it's grocery store clerks, it's, it's restaurant workers, it's, it's everybody. It's not, you can't stereotype who's using the food bank. Mm. And, mm. and a lot of people don't want their business known, especially in, in smaller communities. There's still stigmas unfortunately, around this. Is that preventing some people from going to, to fight their hunger? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 it's easy to say embrace it and just accept it. Sure. But the reality is people are, some people want to be private. So how are those needs being reached? And um, I, I just never surprised who comes in my office and who's in need. So we just help everybody.